Here we are in the midst of this coronavirus, which is uh, not a good time really, but uh, for many of us it's a chance to uh, possibly do things that we couldn't have done before with having more time. Uh, I have a lot of time anyway, so it's not so bad for me, this is my way of life. But for some of you, <coughs> you may be looking for more activities to do and uh, ways to keep yourselves occupied if you uh, want to keep your mind off it and cannot work. Anyway, with that in mind as well, I'm going to have a go at this large painting now of uh, a cafe scene, uh, a street cafe in France. And I'm going to use the sponge rollers again and then finish off with the brushes again, mixed media. So acrylic painting uh, using heavy body acrylics. So working very loosely from loose to tight. We can start loose, we can go to tight, we can't start tight and go to loose very easily. Uh, so I want to work this up very, very loosely with the sponge roller and other methods and then work through by gradually tightening up at the end with the brushes. So we're going to start loose, finish tight. It's going to be my jigsaw method of building up the shapes in the right places, in the right colours, in the right shapes, relevant one to another. So right shapes, right places, right colours, any order you like, relevant one to another. The important thing is that we have a colour on the brush or the uh, sponge and we put it wherever it is once it's on that sponge. So if I have a grey here, if it's on the sponge, I'll put it here, I'll put it here, I'll put it here. The whole painting gradually evolves as a whole, not one part is finished at a time. It gradually is pieces of the jigsaw are put in or painted in, and eventually the whole painting just appears like a jigsaw world with all the parts being put together. So my jigsaw method. Very simple way, but it does rely on upon reasonable drawing. <coughs> I say reasonable, it doesn't have to be a perfect drawing, but you will find painting loosely within a tighter drawing that it works fairly well. If you paint loosely within a bad drawing, it tends to enhance even the bad things of the drawing, so it's not a good idea. So the better the drawing, the uh, painting loosely within it is going to be safer than painting within a very loose drawing unless you're really good. Um, so I'm going to work within a, a medium drawing here, just so I'm going to know where the shapes are and gradually tighten up. So I've got my composition made. It's a fairly high key painting this. I'm going to work my mid-tones, as I tend to always do, my mid-tones out towards my darks, and then back from the mid-tones again when those darks are in, back out towards the lights and the highlights, finishing up painting with light. In other words, finishing up painting the highlights, which is great fun because it brings the whole painting to life. There we go then, let's make a start on this. First of all, I'll show you the palette of paints and I'll show you what the tools we're going to use. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to be using. There's the photograph I'm going to use. You can see I've digitised it on the computer. I've added and changed the colours. I've added figures and so on and changed the composition as I can do in the photo paint on the computer. I very seldom keep the paint and the photograph just as they are. And then my palette of paints ready. Very simple stay wet palette here. A large deep sandwich box. Two layers of paper towels that are wet. And then the heavy body paints can go on top. That will keep it wet when the lid's on for six months plus. Uh, when the lid's off, they'll gradually dry, but still slower than if they weren't in a stay wet palette. Then uh, an ordinary uh, baking tray to mix in, quite large. Taking one of my larger brushes to handle the mixing of the paint. And I'll dip from there to into there, then roll my roller through the brush. Now the roller, standard one and a half inch, two inch are fine as well. Um, sponge roller. Looks very simple, looks very pleb, but in fact the effects you can get with this are wonderful as you're also going to see. We can use the edge for finer lines, we can press hard for block shapes, or we can press more lightly to get a glazing over the top as you're about to see. So we tend to mix the paint and then roll the roller through that to get it off the brush and onto the canvas. 
set of brushes here if I require them because I'm going to build up with the roller first and then finish off with the various brushes working from large down to small on my details at the end. You can see here I've also got other brushes for effects if I need them. My um, comb brushes and some round brushes, flats and filberts. Painting knives if I require them and a pot of water. What's the first colour I'm going to require? I suspect I'm going to work from, from mediums to darks at first as I will do because uh, I'll work my mediums down to my darks and then out from the mediums to the lights again. It's going to be looking at this mid-grey here and then these browns and so on, gradually working through up to the lighter blue-greys and then down to the darks, so working from these colours here around to these mid-greys, down to the darks and then going back in at the end with the lighter colours, the creams and light blues and so on. Build all of those shapes up then I'm going to go back in with the brushes and let's see how we can do this. Finishing with the details such as windows and the lettering. Okay, let's mix our first colour then. What I'm going to want is going to be this mid-grey here and a little bit of water, not too much. It's better to start with a damp sponge roller, so I'm just going to dampen this, not wet it. And if you do wet it, then make sure you dry it off a bit with the paper towel so it's just damp. If it's wet, you have to mix the paint, it'll trickle everywhere afterwards. Just a little bit of water to start off then, and we'll take some, in this case I want this mid-purple mid grey, so I'm going to take a little bit of hot marine, a bit of white, take some purple into that. It's got a slightly browny green tint to it. Let's have a, look, a bit more of that purple in there, I've almost got the colour now, a wee bit of sap green I think just to bring it back so you can see the colours within the mixture that's about it there if I bring that next to it here you'll see that's not far off that colour now this is the trick a little bit more water just to get things going no, not, not too thin though it doesn't want to be right and roll the roller through the brush push the paint out of the brush onto the roller Back to the painting then, and this colour now, where is it? It's over here, it's here, it's here, it's here. So wherever it is, in we go, even down that leg in the centre there. You can use the edge of the roller look just to get a finer area. Tighten up there. It's right across here, across this sign here. We do want some variation. It's nice to have some sort of variation in it. We don't want to just a plain block of colour, so it's nice to get a slight variation in the mixtures. You might get that when you're mixing. When you mix, we don't have to completely mix it up evenly. We can also let some of the other colours, as we mix it, just blend slightly. As quick as I can. I'm not going to keep filming the whole thing. I'm going to film parts of it, and then I'm going to speed the film up to show uh, just how this builds up so rapidly. At the moment it's just to show you the technique, so I'm going to finish off all of these grey colours with this, turn the camera off for the moment and then come back. So back to mixing up more paint, put the roller through the brush like this, back up into here again, and we keep mixing this up right into here. Slightly darker this time, it'll be a little bit lighter than that, so put a little bit more white back in there. And I can cover that very quickly with a roller. I could use a big brush, I could cover quickly with a big brush as well, yes. I just want to get that colour just gleaming through. I'm going to put a base coat on of this just here, and it will just gleam through some of the other. Oh, there we are, wherever I needed a base coat of this colour. I've just about got it on now, and like a jigsaw, I'm going to just keep building up the various colours. Now, the next question you'd be is, do we have to wash the roller um, before going into the next colour? Not necessarily, because we can let one colour, as we do in medium colours, come into another. We can use the roller this way, we can also use it to smudge as well, like that. So I can use the roller two ways, that way and smudging. It's amazing how much there is. Right down to quite fine details, we've got her head here, we've got him here. Um, and I can put him in with that colour, I can put another colour in. If you really can't manage with a roller, especially on a smaller canvas, this is, this is usually meant this technique for much larger canvases. So this canvas down to a 24, 30 would be nice, but below that it starts to get a bit difficult, although you can use it, as you will see. But if you look at my other films, you'll see where I've done that. My next colour, I'm going to jump up quite a big tone. I'm going to come up to a much lighter blue or grey. I'm going to take some turquoise. 
from cerulean blue in fact in this, in this case into this again a bit of water and you see I can go because I'm using heavy bodies I can go lighter onto my roller by doing it this way a little bit of pink make a much pinker lighter blue a little touch of purple into that in this case and we're almost there I think touch more turquoise Maybe even a touch of yellow, yeah, just get these colours just, just right, that's it, that's nice. Now a bit more pink, yes that's, that's quite a nice colour, maybe even a little touch of magenta, just to give it a slight warmer tint. Well that should be about right to there, let's test it out on there. Because that's not far out, I think a bit, a bit lighter still, so a bit more white into it. A bit of water on there, just get it going a bit more, and I can take this roller through that and you'll notice that so much paint on my brush as well that it goes straight onto the roller and I haven't got to go clean the roller out and I can do this quite a lot. I'm going to work this lighter grey back up now, blue grey to here, with that blue as well. It's amazing how much of one colour comes into another and we can just block these colours in at first. And still see my drawing underneath, I've still got my drawing underneath this but I can see it quite clearly so I can come back in with my details yet and I haven't lost everything, so we can start to glaze over things already. At any time I can adjust the colour and put a bit more white into it now. It spits a bit more white in and I can start to come back across this to get these lovely textures that are happening in here. Something else you can do, whenever you want, either using a brush or your finger, you can always smudge. So if I bring that in there I can always build it up a bit into the details by using my finger just to smudge a bit. Like here for instance, if I want to come down there I can bring that paint around there in a bit more detail. I want a more magenta red now. It's not quite as dark as that. I'm going to take some alizarin crimson into my same colour. That's quite a bit... So, up again. We'll just put the roller through it first. Don't have to clean the roller, it's plenty there. Now then, back into here. And we'll start to get some of these lovely textures. You see if I do it lightly I can get a beautiful texture across there. I can press harder to get a harder more blocked effect or lightly just to get the effect of almost like a sea sponge going in there. So here I'm pressing quite hard to get the effect and I'm going to go a bit lighter as I come over the surfaces of things. I'll go back over there with yellow shortly. Some creams to go in there. I just want to get these effects going over the tops so we get a slightly stronger red in places here. And if I have it slightly lumpier on my sponge roller, I start to get a little bit more of the effects going. So a little bit more little lumps of red and things happening to give me some accidental texture. We know that for watercolour, we use controlled accident in watercolour, don't we? That's what we're going to do here. That should be a nice colour. So I'll use some. Lemon yellow, some opera rose. Get onto my roller, we're going quite a bit lighter now. Get the effects of this wall going away here and into here. Back of her neck here, we've got a bit of light shining across. So we're even starting to pick the figures out a little bit now. I need to go down to a much, much warmer red still. So I'm going to wash my brush out, and I've still got plenty of room in my palette. My roller shouldn't be too covered in paint. I shouldn't have to go and wash the roller at this stage. Let's see if we can get away with it and make a darker colour. We're going down towards our deepest colours now. And we'll use the alizarin crimson and some deeper colours. Warms and gives me this lovely colour here, look. Beautiful. It's almost akin to this one here. I'm going to put that onto the roller, a bit of water. Might get it going a couple of times. You see it hasn't made it much lighter going on with the previous colour. Fix it again. Some more alizarin, a nice chunk of it. We touch of the light. And let's look at these colours up here now we want to be. It's the whole of this sign here. Right the way along there, using the edge of the roller just to feel my way along the edge of this sign. Yeah, and then it gets quite solid. There we go, a nice thick 
a green colour coming through up here so I don't want to cover it all there. Just when it's necessary. Just put his head behind there, I want to just blend out. Make that very dark in a moment, I just want to get uh, really basic tones in there. Okay, again, we've got most of those reds in now. I need to uh, the deep browny reds. So I'll just run a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of purple, just to get these colours established. Wherever they are, I've got to get some of that in now. We can put the other colours over afterwards. I've got to put the greens in next with some lovely greens going on. Right, next is to uh, come back on, mix up this. Shouldn't have to uh, wash my whole palette out yet. I should be able to move into another section on green here and let this colour just come into it slightly. As long as my brush is washed out really well to start with. So wash my brush out. And let's take some very light sap green here. It should almost be the colour I want. Now that might not be brown enough yet. We'll see. There's some of the other colour coming into it. Look from there. So we can do with that. And this lovely green, letting it just come over the surface again with a roller, just to give me misty textures. There's lovely effects of light we can get with this. There we go. Can let it go lighter as the paint and the roller mixes in a bit, and I can go back into my actual paint, heavy paint, and come back in with some stronger greens again. We've almost got the greens in now, as much as I want to do or need to do on here, before I come down to the very dark shortly. So I think I've about got my greens in there now to make sure there's, there's a bit more acidic blue I want, blue green I want to put on there. I'm just going to pick up some emerald and just try and plop some emerald green. Yes, I'll do the rest of that with a brush later. Right, now I'm going to wash the roller and go down to a black. Um, do my very darks in and then come back to my working up from my midtones to my lights again. Uh, oh no, no, before I do that I'm going to put a bit more deep blue down here. So I can do that into the existing paint. Ultramarine and a little touch of Prussian to really give me some lovely deep rich blues here now. And they're coming in across here. You will see the effect just having it very immediate. You can see the light coming through the back of the canvas. I'm going to have to stop painting soon because I'm going to have trouble with the light changing the colours as they shine through the canvas. This is just a, I need a bit more of these darks done and work up these lovely rich colours here a bit. Oh, I think we've just the colour I've got our uh, base darks in. Just a bit more here, a texture and shape. And we'll of course want to come back in with heavier paint later. I'm ready to start putting in some of the lighter colours. So I'm going to wash my roller now and make a cream. Right, need to make a pale cream now. And it's a very cool cream, so I'll take my white first into here. Got a clean brush, clean palette, little touch of lemon yellow, a little more white, we've got plenty of it. Now, my roller has been washed, so I've got to dry it out a bit, which I've done. Let's see if this colour's right. If not, I'll put a bit more yellow into it. And we'll put this cream all over where the whites are because I want the white to shine, I want this to shine through the whites here. Ah, now that's what I meant about. Um, the paint trickling if we haven't quite got it dry enough and if you don't get your roller dry enough that's what's going to happen so I'll just mix that thoroughly through there again there's obviously a bit much water still on the roller and not enough colour and paint let's get that going again and make sure that I've got plenty of paint there and not just water although I thought I thought I had uh, Cleaned it up, dried it out. Obviously, I hadn't dried it out enough. My own fault. I want to be coming out here. The edge of the roller. So it's amazing how much you can do with the roller. Don't think it's as pleb as you might. It might at first look. It's not. You can do quite a lot of fine work with it. 
and we can get all of these lighter tones in now and put the really light ones over the top afterwards just get these basics in first this lighter area down here that I'm going to make much lighter later just want to get some of the base and even the sky up here I'm going to put in with this light cream just to start off with before I put light coats back on for the sky even more so after this see how the thing suddenly starts coming together even though it's crudely it's just to establish all of these lights, tones and colours. So we can really get these colours starting to sing a bit more now with overlaying one colour over another here to get these lovely pinks and effects of light happening. And I'm about ready to start putting on some much lighter colours, in fact some of my next lightest colours so that I can uh, carry on with the brushes later. So I'm going to put two more colours on now, a rather much more light slate blue and then almost white. I'm just going to some more of these pinks in a little bit more. We've got the effect of the um, cafe even now haven't we? So we're well on the way with it. Just by using well, the sun's going around so I've got to get on pretty quickly now just to get these lights established before I carry on tomorrow. Um, so I want to make this beautiful light grey here. How am I going to do that? I'll take some white, a little touch of very light turquoise. I'm going to mix with that some pink. See if that takes us anywhere near. So I've got magenta pink going into this and I think a bit of yellow into that. There we go, it's getting very close now. More pink. A little cool grey into it. Take some of that lovely grey blue. Now let's test that on here. And it's only just light enough now, but it's the right sort of colour. So we will just put a tad more white into it. Now let's see what we get when I roll my roll through. I must make sure there's not too much water on the roller again. Right, let's go on to these lighter blues then. Let's see if we can just get those in a bit better. Because the sun is now just starting to come through behind here and I don't want that to happen. I think that's about enough. Now let's try the very light colours of the final. So I'm going to go brush my brush and just come straight up to almost pure white now. Let's take this very light colour now and see if we can get the sky behind here. You see how beautifully that comes up now feeling of these lights coming up and through here into the buildings. I have to come in with some slabs of colour with the brush yet to really make this work but just for the moment we'll just use the roller and get these feelings of distant perspective and the lines of these houses coming down here. As you can see how we can get figures starting to appear now in this. Things just starting to really Take some shape. And some of you might even think, well, I, know, I like that like that, I won't change it. You might just like the effect, we've got this very, very loose effect with this one roller, so that's fine. It's your choice. You start this way, you start loose, you can finish tight. So I shall leave that now and continue with the brushes after this slugging colours on and pulling the shapes together. Well that's it then for the sponge roll of the moment. We've done our base coats from the medium tones out to the darks and then from the darks through to the very lightest on here. Although I'm going to pull out some much stronger colours as I go along with the brushes next. Uh, I could even work in with knives and things, but I don't think it's necessary on this one. I just want to pull out with the brushes. So I'll leave it at that for the minute. Well, here we are a day later, and the sun's out outside. It's a lovely spring morning. Ah, fresh breeze coming in through the conservatory, and I'm going to carry on having a go at this uh, larger canvas of the Secrets 26. So we're working into brushes now, I'm going to work out with the flat brushes first. So, one of the golden rules is, we start with our larger brushes and work down to our smaller. And I want to use nice loose brush work in this, build this up. So we'll come back in straight away with uh, the same colours we've been mixing, so I'm not going to change the colour palette at all. It's exactly the same colours I've shown you in the earlier part of the film, okay? So all I need to do is, I'm going to speed the film up now, 
as I work the whole painting over, pulling out the details and so on. Um, and I may just show a small few bits of detail it's, it's a normal motion but the rest will be speeded up so you can see how this painting develops just with the brushes. I think I've almost come to the stage now where I've done enough loose work with the brush I want to start tightening up with the smaller brushes and pulling this lettering in which will just give the whole ambience a little more sharpness and uh, uh, the atmosphere of the, the French cafes. Okay now it's time to have a go at the lettering so it's going to go across here and uh, other parts of the background which will just bring it into focus more I think. But the wee trick is when you're mixing your paint is that you mix enough with water to make it just thin enough and then you can either twist the brush at the end like this to make a thin point you see we get the point <laughs> or you can flatten it out to make a blade so it's that fat one way and thin the other you could use a watercolour pencil just to map this out but I'm hoping I'm going to get the lettering about the right size so it's slightly dry at the moment I want the lettering to be about this size here A little bit wetter, a little bit thinner, so that it flows off the brush a bit more easily onto here. And I've got to get the same style of lettering as the French we're using. case now I'm going to come down to these bits here and just indicate lettering going on here. The light's sinking here now I've got to bring out this sort of almost pure white in some of these areas now just to bring out these little bits of lovely highlight that are on me. And we've got the other lettering so across this side here a hint at whatever lettering's going on here. I can't be quite sure what it says. As long as we've got the feeling of the impression of this French scene, that's what it's about. We need to paint quite finely on these last details, just to pick out the salient points, as we say. Oh, no, I 
closing stages now. So finishing off now with the lights coming behind the canvas which isn't helping us. Um, just put a little bit of light dot to here and there. The light is shining through but not helping that canvas at all. But I think we're actually about there you know. We'll just make this very deep grey going on down here a bit more. Now the light shining through it, it's making a bit of a difference. We've got these blue greys going on, the light just coming through in places. So we'll leave that to photograph a bit later. Well there we are then, Secrets 26. We're going to another Secrets one now on a, on a square format, um, which will be an interior scene. But it was quite fun to do this one anyway, and it's given you an idea of how we can use the sponge rollers to do the underpainting and then gradually work up very loosely, tightening it as much as we want. I could tighten further than this, of course, but I think it's adequate for what I wanted, that nice loose feeling of a study of this street scene. Mm -hmm.